Oh, this is how you use the CNC machinist calculator for the iPhone. There's four different functions with this calculator. I have a drill, inspect, trig, or machine. So if I wanted to do, use the drill functionality, I just click on this image and I'd bring up my different features. I have a tap drill chart, which is essentially you can find your tap size here and it'll show us your nearest drill size. I can pan, zoom, move this around to use the whole thing. If I hit the back button, it's going to bring you back to the drill mode. I also have a drill decimal chart, so you can also zoom in, pan, move this around and see what drill size or fraction size you may need. This is the drill point length calculator. This is useful if you pick up your tools based off of the drill tip and you program off of the tip. You will need to know this number. Uh, this distance from the tip of the tool to the major diameter when you're programming. So if I need to know my X value, I can just simply click on this field and enter the drill angle. So if it's a 135 degree drill, I can click done here to get rid of the keyboard or I can also click on the screen to open and close my keyboard. So say I'm using a half inch drill, I hit solve it gives me this X value here. You can also use this same tool to calculate a offset. If I need to make a, a chamfer or a countersink bigger, I can use the same tool. So let's say I have a 60 degree uh, chamfer and my tool, and I want to make it bigger by say 20 thou. If I hit solve, that's my Z offset. So I need to push my tool in 17 thousandths. So if I hit home, it brings me back to this screen here. I can go into the trig calculator. This is a right angle solver, so I just need to enter two values. So let's say I know leg A, which is an inch, and angle A, which is 15 degrees. I can just hit solve and it fills out the rest for me. If I hit reset, everything's back to zero. I also have a polar or a Cartesian coordinate converter. A lot of prints have their dimensions either in polar values, you may you need to know them in. Cartesian. So let's say I have a print with polar values and I want to solve for a Cartesian value. So if I'm solving for a Cartesian, I'm entering polar. So polar, I'd have an X radius and an angle that would be 15 degrees. So now I have Cartesian results. And just as the same for the opposite, if I have a two degree angle or radius. It, it basically these labels change once I solve. So if I have a two degree x value and a five degree y value, I have an x and y from polar. I also have a bolt circle calculator. This calculator will solve for up to 12 circles on the bolt circle. So let's say I have a 12 inch diameter with 12 holes this is my center distance from the pickup. So if my program is zero and is negative, if this bolt circle is negative four inches from the program zero and acts in say two inches in Y, I would enter those values there. And your angle to the first hole would be from three o'clock going counterclockwise to your first hole. So 30 degrees. If I come back up here and hit solve, I get all the X and Y coordinates of those 12 circles. That's it for the trig. For the inspector, I have a bunch of tools here. This is a true position calculator. It's good for uh, two axis true position. So let's say I'm checking a, a circle back to a datum structure and the deviation in X was a thou and deviation in Y was five thou. I would enter those values there. Solve, that's my true position. If you have a material modifier, you can just Add that by hand. So if I have a 5,000 bonus tolerance, I'd have a true position of 5,000. Height stand calculator is a pretty interesting tool. Basically, when you check your parts on the plate, you can indicate the plate, indicate the bottom of a circle, and what it will do is it'll calculate the center line of the circle. It'll solve for x. I also have another app that's truly a height stand app which works a little bit more a little bit better than this one but this one's a quick and dirty version so let's say my a value so from the plate to the bottom of the hurl diameter is two inches 
my diameter was say it was 250 so I'm getting the distance from the center of this diameter to the surface or the plate there's a couple different tools so if I had a pin in my diameter a pin in my circle I could check from the top of the pin to the plate and enter those values there so there's a bunch of functionality here sign plate calculator solves your block buildup for to give you an for your angle so say I have a 25 degree angle I want to create and I have a let's see I think I did that backwards yeah so if I have a 5 inch sign plate sorry and a 25 degree angle I would need a 2 inch 113 thousandths block build up to create that angle I also have this GD&T quick guide which is kind of experimental what I did is I kind of describe things in my own words for GD and T because if you look in the book, it's kind of confusing. So if you have one of these symbols on your print, for example, this one, it gives you the name and some information about it. Um, this is all of the, I believe, the anti-1994 symbols are here. So if you, like I said, if you see these on the print and, you know, sometimes it offers some, some suggestions on how to uh, check the surfaces. So that's it for inspection. And now for the machinist, there's a couple different tools here. These are my inch calculations or conversion surface feet from RPM and tool diameter or vice versa. Feed rates from inches a minute to inches of rev and your chip load. Same is true for the metric and also required horsepower. And that's it. Thanks. Oh, also this button right here will bring me bring you to my blog. So users have questions or they want to put something up there, they can do there from here. Thank you.